Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft and today I brought my coffee along because I'm going to go and respond to Lian Likes and Simone's eight questions about my fountain pen journey. So if you have a little bit of coffee, a little bit of beverage, this is a good time to get one because I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell as I answer the questions. All right. Uh, okay, so first, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? So mine began technically with the Faber-Castell Ambition Cocos. This was a gift to me back in 2017. I wasn't into fountain pens. I've talked a bit about this pen on my channel. It didn't quite work for me, but when I rediscovered fountain pens, I learned how to flush pens and I did just that and it started to work just beautifully. This is in medium. Um, but when I first used this, it didn't quite work well. So I just put it aside. And after a few years, actually 2017, 2022, five years, I picked up this pen, which I don't have right now. It's at my workplace. It is just your garden variety fountain pen that you can find in a bookstore. It had this little line character on it. And when I put in a cartridge there, it worked so well. I thought, hey, you know what? I wanna get myself another pen that I can bring to meetings. And that's when I decided to get my Twispy. This was my first um, intentional buy. It is a Twispy Diamond 580 Iris. It is inked with the very same ink I started it with in November 2022. So this ink has been there for a long time and it still works quite well. So you could say it kind of started in 2017, but it really started in 2022 towards the end of November. Okay, second question. Um, what's your favorite ink uh, at the beginning and uh, what are your go-to inks now? My very first ink, which I still love, is the Jacques Serbon Amethyst de Laurel. I really like this ink. It is a shimmer ink, right? And you can see it right there. It has some silver shimmer, if I'm not mistaken. And I love this ink. In fact, my Diamond 580 is inked with this, and I've used this ink on a few other pens. I really love shimmer inks and I got a lot of them at the beginning. But I realized after so many months of, so many, like three, four months of using fountain pens, I realized that it was a little tricky to use shimmer inks. I just got very lucky with my Diamond 580 in, in medium because it really works well with it. Um, but with my other pens, I did experience some clogging and all those issues. I mean, they're relatively easy to clean out, but it's just a little bit of a struggle to do that. And so, a little bit of work. And so, nowadays, I gravitate towards more standard shading kind of inks. And maybe your uh, sheen inks every so often. Uh, my go-to inks right now would be the Mont Blanc Midnight Blue. I use it with my Mont Blancs. I use that quite a lot nowadays. And I think uh, my uh, my Urban Cacao do Brazil is another one of my favorites. It's a little bit of a darker brown kind of uh, ink. Okay, question number three. How have uh, you... Oh, how have your pen and ink taste change over time? Huh, that's a tricky question. With the ink, I've shared a little bit of that. Um, now I'm more into the standard shading kind of inks. A little bit of sheen, but not much of shimmer anymore. Um, but for my pens, um, I still think I go for quite a variety of pens, but I realize now that I lean more towards certain colorways and um, designs. So the colorways would be like um, purples and blues, maybe pinks, 
Um, and for my design, something to do with flowers, I think. Um, I've also been looking into Mont Blanc's and vintage pens, which I didn't really at the beginning. First off, I thought Mont Blanc's would be too expensive. They are quite expensive. I consider these investments. And um, I have my vintage pens. Vintage is uh, basically defined as something that's 40 years old or older. Um, and so these are the two changes that I have uh, observed during my um, journey so far. Um, I still like variety because just like what's been mentioned in a few other videos, there's really no opportunity to try pens. And so I accumulate to experience. But now that we are moving past COVID, I feel that there are more opportunities for pen meets and hence that fear of missing out sort of thing going around right now with the fountain pen community within the fountain pen community is sort of lessening because then we can taste and try and figure out if we like a pen or not when we exchange experiences with someone in the community. Um, number four, are there pens or inks that you want to try? Yes. I am looking at getting an SD or at least experiencing one. I am also looking at uh, experiencing pens by Casey. In fact, I'd like to get one of those pens. Also, I'd like to get an ST. Um, I'd like to try a Monte Grappa. I haven't tried that yet. And a Conklin. Um, my, I also want, actually, it's more of like the nib kind of question. I want to experience other nib grinds. So I've experienced fine, extra fine, medium, broad, double broad. I think my vintage Mont Blanc has an architect grind because it looks different if I write vertically and horizontally with it. So, oh yeah, and my Pelican 140 has a soft nib that is almost a flex really nice line variation on this one but um i have yet to try other other grinds like the custom grinds perhaps or the the newer teco grind or the journaler or the kanji so there are quite a number of grinds that i would like to explore um next what is your grail pen i have two grail pens and I made sure to write the information somewhere. Okay, so one of my grail pens is by cypress.tw. So this cypress pen is called the Titanium Alloy Butterfly, Butterfly with Peony. And it is like, ah, oh, I really, really want that pen. It's such a beautiful pen. And another grail pen of mine is a Mont Blanc Meister Struck Le Petit Prince Solitaire Le Grand because I love the wooden barrel and I like the nib design and I don't know, I like Le Petit Prince too. So that could be another reason. Um, next, how many pens do you currently own? Huh, I think I have, and you hear the rustling because I wrote my notes. I have about 37 pens. As you can see here, I have, I don't know if you can see the little drawer, so I have quite a number of pens. I have, and this is where the show and tell will come in, I have the beautiful Kasama Una. This is a Filipino made pen. So I have this, love the nib design of that. Um, I have one Diplomat Aero. I have this Tacray EDC sort of thing. It has a glass breaker on the bottom end of it. I have uh, four sailors, oh no, five sailors, sorry. I have a sailor prophet junior as well. I have a Ben New. Oh, and then I have these lovely pens as well uh, from Drew Pisane. Okay, I love these. Really beautiful designs. These are real flowers, by the way. I have two of those. I have the Vanishing Point. I have a Lamy. It's a Lamy Maron. 
I got that because, you know, people have been talking about the Lamy and I don't have a Lamy experience and I wanted to experience that. And I found that it was a really, really good everyday carry sort of pen. So I do feel like it's a little bit too long for me, but let me show it to you. Since I like the color so much, um, I don't want to let it go because it's a lovely like coffee, chocolate sort of color. So this is going to stay as my one of every brand sort of collection. I don't know about the every, but one of the more popular brands collection. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Cavecos. This started it all. This is my favorite. It's the Caveco in Mellow Blue. I think I got this in Broad. That's when I thought I would be very much into the Broad sort of grind. I found out that I'm not. I am more into the fine, medium fine, especially when I journal. Um, and just to show you, this is the sailor that started off my sailor journey. I just said this one, which I love. This is every rose has its thorn, but now I have um, four other ones. The Prophet Junior with the rabbit on it, and then I have the Sakura, Hachimonjiya Kuba Sakura, if I'm not mistaken. I have the festivals in Momo, and I have the mini in Air Grey. Oh yeah, and of course, this started the vintage collection. This is in fact, I found out, not quite vintage. It's about 30 plus years old. It's not quite 40 plus yet, but I thought at the beginning that this was vintage because it was something that my dad gave me. Um, but he got it 30 years ago or so. Yeah. 30, yeah, 30 years ago, 31 if I'm not mistaken. So this is almost vintage. And this, of course, will never ever leave my collection. All right, but that started it off. And then I got all the rest of my vintage pens. These are definitely vintage. And when I got this Mont Blanc, right, I thought that I really liked the way it wrote. So it was quite a wet writer because I really think it has some sort of like an architect grind going for it um and then i saw the baby fell in love with that then i heard that they had this very unique sort of um retractable nib and that the boutique here had it and so i wanted that of course and it seemed as if i really liked the pocket size and when the boutique told me that they have the mozart jewelry i went ahead and i got that one two okay so all in all they're about um 37 pens including the line the cat line thing which i have in my workplace and uh i'm not sure if i'm gonna stop there i think perhaps i want to get a, a pelican i want to get a casey pen and i am looking for the dark lilac from lamy that is to match my dark lilac Lamy ink, which I am falling in love with. At first, I didn't see what was so special about it. And then I re-swatched it and kind of used it with a few pens. And then I understood the beauty of it. Okay, uh, next question. Do you have a limit on pens or inks? Or do you have a maximum number? Hmm, well... First of all, I bought myself a 36 pen drawer kind of thing. Um, and I think that right now I'm gonna cap my pens at that in terms of generally how many the general pens are. But I do have my vintage pens housed at this. They are four, um, I'm quite happy. Um, perhaps if I were going to add one more to the vintage, I think I'll be looking at getting a Parker 51 maybe, or a wet ruler, or maybe those super old and very expensive but so beautiful Waterman Flex ones. That would be like fantastic. Um, and then here, of course, I'd be looking at getting the Grail pen, which is the, uh, the Little Prince 
pen. But generally, I think hmm, 50 is a good number, perhaps even less. I'm actually curating my collection right now and figuring out which ones I'd like to keep and which ones are good to um, send to someone else who can give it uh, much love too. In terms of ink, I currently have about 63-ish, I think close to 70 different inks. Some of them are in bottles and some of them are in sample vials and of course the bottle sizes are very different as well. I have huge ones that are 50 milliliters, I have 5 milliliters, I have vials in 3 milliliters. Um, so anyway, the question is, what? where do I cap it at? Well, I just really want to see which inks I gravitate towards and start really using those. And if I find that there are inks that I don't really like using, perhaps a lot of the shimmers, not all of them, because I really like my Jacques Herbons. Um, perhaps those I will slowly release back to the community so that other people can enjoy them as well. Um, so maybe I'm looking at eventually, hopefully, about maybe 15 to 20 inks that I will, uh, that I know I really, really like and really want to have. One of those, let me just get it for you. One of those that I found out I really, really, really like. So I got a bottle of it is Cacao do Brazil from Urban. This one, I love this ink. And so I know that when I bought this, I will definitely be using it. So these three actually are definitely within those 15-ish inks that I'd like to have and keep a supply of. Okay, um, another one, number eight. Oh, we're in our last one. What would you do if another pen or ink came along? Hmm. If I can go and have more pen meets, or even just one or two, and experience those pens and those pen meets, perhaps I can have a more intentional um, and educated decision on whether or not I want to get that pen, um, or if I want to get that ink. If I can do more ink swaps or just the samples, I really like the fact that I can get samples where I am, because that really gives me an idea if I want the ink or not. And so far, uh, the samples that I've gotten, the, hmm, I know none of them have really made me think I should get a bottle of that. Um, because this one, when I got this ink, I got it in their smaller bottles, which I still have somewhere. Hmm, and that made me think, okay, I definitely like this. So I got myself a bigger one because it's not very easy to get these inks here. Um, so yeah, perhaps I just would like to experience them and then maybe decide if I really want to have them in my collection or not. But I'm definitely going to get myself an SD because I've read a lot about that and I want to try some of their specialty nibs. Um, and the Lamy Dark Lilac as well. I do want to get that too and I want to get that in a specialty uh, nib. I think they call it their kanji or their cursive nip. All right, um, hmm. I think that's about it. That's the whole eight pen questions from Leon Likes and Simone and also from everyone else who has answered it. I'll be linking their uh, eight pen question videos in the description below. So if you'd like to visit those, do feel free to do so and please also come and make your videos so that we can sort of have a, a panel of sorts that will broaden and perhaps uh, benefit the mind hive that we seem to all be creating right now as we all sort of reignite the interest um, in fountain pens and in very conscious writing. Okay? This is Kai from Kikai Craft. I hope you enjoyed my little chat with you today and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day or a restful evening. Bye!